Hello and welcome everyone to the eighth session of the DuraCloud Brown Bag series and the last session of the 2012 Brown Bag uh, series. As many of you probably know, my name is Carissa Smith. And I am the partner specialist, primarily working on the DuraCloud project, which is both a managed service and an open source technology offered by the DuraSpace organization. To find out more about either DuraCloud or DuraSpace, I encourage you to visit their respective websites at duracloud.org and duraspace.org. Please note that your audio for today's call is disabled, as you probably had already observed. But I highly encourage participation through the chat feature located in the bottom right of your screen. Feel free to insert questions as I go along uh, throughout the demo today, or feel free to hold them until the end. Um, I always leave plenty of time at the end to answer any and all questions that have come through the chat. So um, again, just feel free to use that as much as you wish, and I will address all questions at the end of today's session. With that, I'd like to get our brown bag session started. As the screen in front of you should say, um, I will be discussing ways to upload content to DuraCloud today. There are, are several, and I will do live demonstrations of quite a few of them. Let me advance my slide here. <clears throat> so uh, there are three methods in particular for uploading content to DuraCloud, and I've listed them on the slide in the order of how easy and straightforward they are. So the first method, and uh, one that I will certainly demonstrate today, is uploading content through the web-based DuraCloud interface. Again, this is one of the most easy and straightforward ways to really quickly get content into your DuraCloud account. The second method is actually uh, two different tools that uh, DuraCloud provides. These are local, standalone uh, tools that you can run locally. Um, one works very similar to the web-based upload tool and is called the Upload Utility. And again, it's just a standalone tool that you run locally to upload content to DuraCloud. The, uh, the other tool, known as the Synchronization Utility, again, is a local standalone uh, utility that you would run and interact with at the command line. Um, and you can run it in two methods or two modes, but essentially it allows you to synchronize your local content uh, to the cloud. Um, you can determine whether you'd like that synchronization to be in an ongoing fashion, meaning that um, you know, weeks and months down the road the synchronization tool will still be running or you could kick it off again uh, and synchronize content um, in an ongoing fashion. Or if you want to use the synchronization tool as a one-time kind of bulk upload uh, scenario. Um, so the synchronization tool does uh, provide both use cases, and I can show you how to run it in both of those both of those modes. Um, <clears throat> and again, some of the stuff that I'm that I'm giving you an overview for probably doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of being described, but I'll certainly launch into the live demo here in just one moment, and you can see see for yourself, and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. And then the third method, which I will not be demonstrating today because I am not a programmer is uh, transferring content to DuraCloud through the DuraCloud REST APIs. We do have a very uh, fully documented set of uh, application uh, programming interfaces that allow you to integrate your own uh, local applications with DuraCloud and then transfer content from you know, another, your local web application or your local uh, homegrown software uh, into DuraCloud and backup content that way. Um, again, I'm not a programmer, so I won't be going through how to leverage those, but you can not only upload or transfer content into DuraCloud via the REST APIs, you can certainly transfer content back out of DuraCloud. You can interact with DuraCloud at, at, at a programmatic level and interact with your content at a programmatic level uh, through the DuraCloud REST APIs. And they're fully, fully open, um, and we have heard from customers in the past that they are relatively straightforward to use. So if you have uh, local homegrown applications that you'd like to interact with uh, DuraCloud and, and back up your content from, uh, they are also another method in which you can uh, upload content to DuraCloud. So with that, let me minimize this screen. I'm going to pull up the Adobe window for one second, making sure there are no questions. That's wonderful. OK, and now let me pull up the next screen on my list. So the first thing I'm going to demonstrate today is the DuraCloud web-based upload tool. 
Um, I wanted to take a step back for a moment and explain for folks who are not that familiar with DuraCloud uh, that DuraCloud is a web application that integrates with various commercial and non-commercial cloud storage providers. And since it is a web application, it's web-based, it's accessible via a URL through a web browser. Um, I have pulled up the demo.duracloud.org account. This is the DuraCloud demonstration instance that I have running. As a customer of DuraCloud, your account would be accessible at the URL uh, of your customization. Typically, folks have their institution named at duracloud.org. Um, but again, that's customizable and something that you would configure when you subscribe to the service. I'm going to pause for one moment and log in here. Uh, note that as a, a customer, you would also have uh, various user profiles that you could configure, um, of course, so you could log into your account. So again, I'm going to take another step back and orient folks to the interface that you see before we actually delve into the actual demo of the upload tool itself. The first thing that I always like to point out over here in the left-hand side of the screen is, of course, the DuraCloud branding and the DuraCloud logo. But directly below that, the Amazon Web Services logo. And this gives you a visual indication that the content in the interface that's located directly below this logo is currently being stored in the Amazon S3 cloud environment. And one of the real strengths and benefits of DuraCloud is the fact that it integrates with various cloud, uh, cloud storage providers. And you can easily navigate to these various providers all within the same interface. So if I scroll over to the right-hand side of my screen, you'll see the provider pull-down window. And my demonstration instance is actually integrated with all of our storage providers. So I'm simply going to choose one from the pull-down window itself. You can see that the interface itself looks remarkably the same, with the one exception that here on the left-hand side, the logo now says San Diego Supercomputer Center. And actually, the content that's listed below this is being stored uh, at SDSC. So again, the interface itself, you interact with in the same exact manner, um, but the content is actually being stored in, in two very different locations, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, completely different uh, storage providers. Uh, as all of you know, Amazon is a commercial for-profit company, and SDSC is actually an academic not-for-profit. Not um, but you don't really have to worry about that, either uh, from a in technical integration perspective or a business or administrative perspective. DuraCloud really extrapolates out those differences, and all you know is uh, that it is available through this little provider pull-down window. And again, that's really one of the strengths of DuraCloud. One other thing I'll note, and this is truly a demo for another day, but DuraCloud uh, synchronizes content in the cloud for you amongst the various storage providers. So when you add content to the Amazon storage area, our DuraCloud service will automatically synchronize that content to the SDSC storage provider, for instance, ensuring that all, of, all copies of your content, regardless of where they're stored, both physically and from a vendor perspective, are constantly uh, synchronized. So you have rep replica copies in the cloud. And again, uh, we do that based on whatever subscription plan you've, you've signed up for. Um, some of our subscription plans just have Amazon as the sole uh, copy of your cloud, uh, excuse me, a copy of your content in the cloud. Um, and then other plans include an additional replica copy stored at SDSC, for instance. So again, that's a, that's a subscription plan, um, configurable entity. However, um, just kind of an overview of, of additional services that DuraCloud provides. I'm going to pause one moment and navigate back to the Amazon storage area. And I did want to do a, a couple more uh, quick explanations of the interface itself before we delve into adding content. So here on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a list of spaces. And spaces is a DuraCloud term uh, that we've coined that essentially means a content container, a content bucket. You can think of it as a top-level folder, for instance. Uh, the, the only difference between a space and a folder is that you can nest folders in your local, uh, on your local computer. You cannot nest spaces within DuraCloud. It's essentially a space that holds content. And it's really that. It's a flat storage, um, essentially. So if I click on a space here, the interface itself will come to life. You'll see a lot more information than you probably thought was possible. In the center of your, of your screen, you'll see the list of content items that are currently stored within this space. There are five, as you can see. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the detail for whatever it is you've selected. 
In this case, I have a space selected. It's in a very dark gray color here on the left. So I see the details here on the right for that space. If I click on a content item, you simply click on the row or the name of the content item. You'll see the content detail now here on the right hand side of your screen. Um, again, there is a lot of information that DuraCloud reports through this interface. Um, again, that's a demo for another day. I have various YouTube videos explaining what all of these uh, details and buttons do. Um, so I won't, I won't delve into that today, but if you're interested, I encourage you to check out the DuraCloud YouTube channel. Uh, what I do want to point out today, though, is this Add Items button here in the center of your screen. And that's actually the DuraCloud upload uh, capability through the web interface. It is space specific, so if I click Add Items right now, we will be uploading content items to this Carissa folder test space. If I happen to be selected uh, and within the storage area for the Michelle content space, and I clicked Add Items, we would be adding items specifically to that space. Um, so it is space specific, keep that in mind. If I click the Add Items button, you will get the following wonderful little pop-up window. And similar to probably a lot of other web applications that you've used, you have the ability to add uh, multiple files and folders uh, and upload them through this web, uh, web interface. So to do that, you simply click Add Files and Folders down here in the bottom left of this pop-up window. Of course, as you might expect, it'll give you uh, a list of all of your local files and folders uh, that you can choose from. I'm going to navigate to my desktop here and click on my cute puppies uh, folder that I created just for today's demo. And I'm going to choose that. You can multi-select as many files and folders as you wish. Uh, depending on what operating system and keyboard you're using, it's either Control, Shift, or Command. Uh, one of those combinations to multi-select uh, multiple files and folders. Once you get in this interface, you can of course remove if you've inadvertently selected more content that you'd like to add. <clears throat> and then the last button, and probably the most important, is the Start Upload button here down in the bottom right of this pop-up window. Um, the interface itself will report back to you its status, so right now it's telling us it's starting to upload. And then here in just a moment it will quickly report that it has uploaded the content items um, to this space. It does it relatively quickly because they are small content items. And then it says it has completed the upload successfully. Um, I did want to pause here for just one moment and explain that um, this upload tool is contingent on your local network or bandwidth. So if you've selected thousands of files and folders and, and quite a bit of content in terms of gigabytes or megabytes, um, just keep in mind what your local internet connection is. If you have a slow connection and you've chosen to upload a lot of content, it will take our tool a little while to push that into DuraCloud. Um, it does uh, report back a nice status, as you saw. It was a little quick because my content items are pretty small, but it will it will continue to report the the upload status um, for your content items within this pop-up window. But again, just keep in mind that this is using your internet connection. So um, if you have a fast internet connection, you probably won't notice anything. But if you are, <laughs> heaven forbid, on a very slow internet connection or dial up, if that even exists anymore, it'll take a little while to upload the content items to DuraCloud. So I'm going to close out of this window. Um, to view the content items that we just uploaded into the interface, uh, I would suggest clicking the Refresh button. This will refresh the list of content items within this space. <clears throat> and you can see that now we have five additional content items stored within this Carissa folder test space. There were originally five. And you can see that my cute puppies uh, have all made it into my DuraCloud account. I did want to take a step back for a moment and explain the naming convention of these content items as this will be uh, important for folks who have a file directory structure that they want to maintain. You can see that my top level folder, the cute puppies, uh, does persist in DuraCloud with a cute puppies and then a slash. That indicates um, in DuraCloud land and as well when you download your content items back that our service will recreate that cute puppies top level folder and then put all of these JPEG images back into that top level folder. And you can see I've uploaded content before uh, that has a top level folder and then content within it. 
And then here in the next part of the demo, I'll show you what nested folders look like. Essentially, it's just uh, the, the title of the folder, a slash, and then if you have additional folders, it would be the name of that folder and a slash, name of that folder, slash. Um, essentially, DuraCloud persists a directory structure in the naming convention of the content items that we store in DuraCloud. So even though you can't see the hierarchy, we do persist it in the naming conventions of the content items within the, within the uh, DuraCloud storage area. Um, and if people have questions, feel free to insert them in the chat, and I will uh, follow up with them during the question and answer session. But I wanted to touch base on that while it was uh, at the top of my mind, uh, and I was looking right at it in the content names of these, uh, these images. So again, that's a really straightforward way to add content to DuraCloud through the Add Items button. Um, I'm going to transition now to the, the two uh, standalone utilities that I mentioned in method number two for uploading content to DuraCloud. So the first thing I wanted to do is navigate to the DuraSpace wiki, and this is where the DuraCloud documentation lives as well as where you would download these tools. I thought it would be important to point out how you get to them. <laughs> Um, so the DuraCloud uh, wiki and DuraCloud documentation is located at wiki.duraspace.org. And if you simply scroll down here on the left-hand side of your screen and click on DuraCloud, you will then be uh, taken to the DuraCloud documentation uh, area. And this is where you can find anything and everything you would ever want to know about DuraCloud. Uh, in particular, here on the right-hand side of the screen is a list of all of the various tools that DuraCloud provides. They're all open source and free. You can download them and use them um, at any point. You don't have to have a DuraCloud account or be a DuraCloud customer at all, of course. Um, I'll note two in particular, the DuraCloud upload tool, which I will demo here in just a moment, and the DuraCloud synchronization tool. If you click on either of these, they will go to the respective uh, documentation pages explaining how to use the tools. And then they will also link you off to the downloads page. And this is where you can download these tools to your local machine, which you will need to do in order to use them. And just while we're talking about uh, tools and documentation, etc., I'll note that you can get to the DuraCloud REST API documentation from this, uh, from this website as well. You click on DuraCloud REST API, if, uh, of course, listed here in the documentation area, and then it will take you off to the DuraCloud REST API, which is, as you can see, very fully documented with a lot of snippets of code and how you would interact with uh, the DuraCloud REST API. OK, so that was my documentation tutorial. Um, I'm going to show you my local desktop. And apologies uh, if it seems a little messy. I tried to clean it up before today's demo. So before, uh, before the demo started, I downloaded both the upload tool, which is a jar file, as well as the synchronization utility, which is also another jar file. Um, first, I'm going to, to show you how to use a local upload tool. Um, it's very similar to the web-based upload tool. It just has one additional step. So to use the local upload tool, you would simply double click on this jar file, which I did earlier. And you will get a little pop-up window that looks like this. Essentially, it is requesting the login credentials for your DuraCloud account before it will actually authenticate and actually upload content to DuraCloud. So the first thing you have to do is insert the host name of your DuraCloud account. Essentially, it is the URL of your DuraCloud account. And of course, you have to insert your username and password. And then the last piece of information that you'll need to use the local upload tool is the name of the space where you'd like your content uh, to be uploaded to in DuraCloud. So the upload tool needs to know where this content is going, not just the account, but the uh, particular space. And not that you remember, but <laughs> the space ID is carissa-folder-test. And this does have to be uh, exact. It has to match the space name uh, within your DuraCloud account, which you can always double check if you have it up in the web interface. So once you've provided the proper authentication information, if you just click Continue, <clears throat> you'll see that the upload tool uh, locally looks exactly the same as the upload tool does in the web interface. You simply click Add Files and Folders. You can multi-select as many files and folders as you wish, and then click Start Upload. Again, this is reliant upon your local internet connection. And there really is no difference between the web interface tool and this local uh, local upload tool. It really depends on, on your use case if you'd prefer to use uh, the tool locally or whether you'd like to use it in a web browser. But um, the performance uh, is exactly the same. <clears throat> 
So again, something I wanted to quickly mention, but uh, nothing, nothing earth-shattering there. And then the next tool that I wanted to demonstrate today, and one of the, our more robust tools, is the synchronization utility, um, which you interact with at the command line. So the first thing you would need to do is, of course, download this jar file to your local machine. And then you would need to bring up a terminal window. And it depends on what operating system you are, how you get to that. But on a Mac, you go to your utilities and bring up a terminal. Uh, the next thing you need to do is navigate to the directory in which you have your, your synchronization tool stored. Uh, in my case, it's on my desktop, so it's pretty easy to get to. And then you need to configure the tool uh, to run uh, appropriately. So I'm going to step through this uh, pretty much step by step, so apologies for folks who are more familiar with running command line tools. Um, but for folks who are not, um, I'm going to take you step by step through it, and uh, hopefully it'll make, make, make more sense as we go. So the, the the way that you invoke the synchronization tool to work at the command line um, is written out in this first line of code. Actually, one moment while I make this window bigger. I have a feeling it might be a little bit uh, difficult to see. So one moment while I figure out the command keystrokes to get it bigger for you folks. All right, hopefully that looks a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier to read. So the first uh, thing that you need to type into the command line once you've changed uh, to your, uh, uh, you've navigated to your desktop or wherever you've stored your tool, is java-jar and then the sync tool version that you're running. So you can see that in the first line of code. That essentially invokes the sync tool uh, to actually run. And then the next uh, configuration options are all required for the synchronization tool to run. So the first uh, configuration option is the dash h. H is in house, or in this case, host. Um, and you simply insert the URL for your DuraCloud account. In this case, again, it's demo.duracloud.org. Uh, the next configuration option that is required is the dash S, which again stands for space. And again, you need to type out the name of the space where you'd like your synchronization tool to upload content to in DuraCloud. Uh, again, we're going to use the Carissa folder test space. Uh, the next two configuration options, dash u and dash p, probably pretty straightforward, username and password. You do need to pass those in. Uh, the synchronization tool does authenticate to your DuraCloud account. Um, DuraCloud does not allow any interactions that don't, that don't have uh, some sort of authentication mechanism. Uh, just as a, as a side note, you always have to authenticate to your DuraCloud account to do anything uh, to, to the account, whether it's add content, retrieve content, etc. And then the next two configuration options, dash C and dash W, are paths to your local uh, directories uh, that are required. So the dash C uh, stands for content, and it is the path to the local uh, directory that you'd like to upload to DuraCloud. So you can see that uh, my directory is stored on my desktop, and it's actually a folder called travel receipts. That's what I would like to upload to DuraCloud. Um, you do need the full path to that directory, um, and it can be a, a top-level folder with as many nested folders underneath it as, as you wish, or you can pinpoint uh, down further in that folder directory tree uh, if you wanted to as well. So if I had multiple folders within that travel receipts and I wanted to get down to the nitty-gritty, I could type out that whole path and only upload um, a subfolder that's located in the travel receipts uh, file directory but I actually want everything that's currently stored in that travel receipts directory, so I'm going to leave my path there. And then the dash W is uh, a configuration option that stands for your work directory. And I mentioned earlier that the sync tool keeps track of uh, its status as it's transferring content up to DuraCloud. And this work directory is where it also stores its logs so that if you stop the tool and you restart it in a month or in a day or in a year um, and point it at that same travel receipts folder, it can pick up where it left off. It can note any content additions that have been made, any content changes that were made, and then synchronize those changes to the cloud. So this work directory is very important for the synchronization tool, and it does need to exist uh, before you actually run the tool. So you need to create that folder uh, locally. 
Um, as a note, I have everything on the desktop just for easy, uh, easy demonstration purposes, but you can store uh, these folders uh, anywhere. As long as you type out the proper path, you will be all set to go. And then the last configuration option that uh, you can add or you don't have to is the dash x command. Uh, dash x essentially means to exit once it has completed. So I mentioned before that the sync tool can run in two modes. One is in an ongoing synchronization fashion, meaning that if you do not, and I, and I repeat, do not type the dash x and you click enter right now, the synchronization tool will start to run. It will upload all of that content in the travel receipts folder to DuraCloud, and then it will continue to run in the background monitoring that travel receipts uh, directory for any changes that are made. So if I add content to that folder, um, the sync tool will pick it up and then transfer it on the fly to your DuraCloud instance. Or if I edit um, a content item in that directory, it will upload that change to DuraCloud. If I do type the dash x command, however, uh, that would be x, not s, um, the, the synchronization utility will shut down as soon as it has transferred all of the content in the travel receipts folder to DuraCloud. And essentially, this is what I would term the batch upload or bulk upload uh, mode of the synchronization utility. Essentially, upload everything and then shut down. You can always start the tool back up again, and it will go back to its, its log files and, and confirm what it, ha what it has uploaded versus what it hasn't, and upload any changes that have been made. Um, but again, it's just a kind of a mode in which you can run the sync tool, either in an ongoing fashion or um, upload everything now, shut it down, and then you can start it up again uh, when you wish. So with that, I'm going to click Enter, and we can see that uh, the interface will report that it's starting up the sync tool. Um, I'll note that it pr prints out a configuration list for you. Essentially, it spits back out all of the configuration options which you've chosen. And then it will also print out um, a final status for you. You can see <clears throat> that it has uploaded content uh, to DuraCloud. One second. Well, I remember that I did this before. Let's try this again. <clears throat> it will print out a status for you once it's completed, telling you that in, it indeed uh, successfully uploaded content items to DuraCloud. Um, if there is a lot of content that it's uploading to DuraCloud, it will print out a status every 10 minutes, letting you know how many content items it has successfully synchronized, how many content items it's currently uh, in the process of synchronizing, and also if it has encountered any failed synchronization. So you can see that report right here. Um, a failed synchronization would only occur if you had a network blip, essentially a dropped packet here or there. The synchronization tool does retry failed synchronizations of content. It essentially appends them to a list in its log file, and then it will retry those at the end once it's uploaded all the other content. Um, so you should never really have a failed sync um, because the sync tool does retry uh, anything that has failed. You can see that there were five successful synced content items, and the tool did exit. Um, so we're back to my, my uh, prompt screen here. Um, after it uploaded those five content items. So one moment while I navigate back here to my DuraCloud account. I'm going to click refresh again. So I had 10 content items and I should have 15 now. I actually have 14 because I have a silly DS store which is a Mac, a silly Mac file. But you can see down here below uh, the travel receipts uh, folder that was added. And then, as I mentioned, you can see the subdirectories. Both I have a conference subfolder as well as a shuttle uh, subfolder. And then the four content items that were uploaded uh, to DuraCloud through uh, the sync tool. So again, that's just a, uh, a quick recap of how you would configure uh, the synchronization utility to run. If I were to add an additional content item uh, to the travel receipts folder and either rerun the synchronization tool, or if I had the synchronization tool running uh, in an ongoing fashion in, uh, on, my, on my local machine, it would pick up that a content addition and then upload it to DuraCloud so it would automatically propagate uh, through to your cloud copy. 
So I know that was a really quick recap of the three different ways that you can add content to DuraCloud as well as I touched upon the DuraCloud REST API. However, I wanted to pause right there and open up the floor for questions. I, and I will bring up my window to see if there's anything that has come through the chat. But um, again, that's a, a quick recap of the ways you can add content to DuraCloud. And I will open up the floor for questions at this point from folks if you have any. And I don't know as I've seen any questions come through the chat, but uh, feel free to start typing them in. Otherwise, I will fill the time with more of me speaking. <laughs> All right, I see some folks typing, which is a good sign. Again, feel free to use the chat feature to, to answer or ask any question whatsoever. Um, if you don't have a particular question about how you add content to DuraCloud, but have just a DuraCloud uh, question in general or a cloud question in general, feel free to uh, take this opportunity as well to add, uh, ask any questions uh, that you may have. I'm certainly more than willing to answer any and all questions that you have. It doesn't necessarily have to deal with how you add content to DuraCloud. So Peter McDonald asks, uh, you don't see an add items when you look at the at your space in DuraCloud. You only see a refresh button. And that is probably due to the fact that you don't have the right permissions to add content to your space. Um, for some folks, we do have the ability uh, for account administrators to restrict um, users from adding content to DuraCloud. They can only essentially have read access at the space level, Peter. And that would be my guess is what uh, is why you're experiencing that. You can only read, i.e. view the list of content items and download the content items, but you haven't been given the permission or the ability to add content items to your DoraCloud account. So that would probably be why you can't see that button. Otherwise, it should be there. Other questions from folks? regarding uh, anything that I demonstrated today or about DuraCloud in general. I can talk about pricing or subscription plans or um, really any, any types of questions related to DuraCloud. I'm more than uh, happy and willing to answer. While folks think about questions, I will bring up uh, the last two slides of my PowerPoint. Um, I always do a pitch for a free DuraCloud trial account, so if you are even remotely interested in DuraCloud, not quite sure how it may or may not fit at your institution, I would encourage you to sign up for uh, a free trial account. Um, you're under no obligation to continue using DuraCloud. Um, you, you simply get a, a free account for 60 days and you can determine uh, whether it will work at your organization or not. And I am here to provide any and all support that, that you may need uh, during those 60 days as well. Uh, doing training sessions and answering questions, etc. So again, I'd encourage you to go to the DuraCloud website if you have any uh, any interest in whatsoever in DuraCloud. Um, it's a really good deal to try out the service for free for 60 days. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, and I'll make sure there are no questions before I pause for today, is that this is the last session of the 2012 series, but I will be back in 2013. So please stay tuned to the DuraCloud website um, for more information about what the 2013 sessions will entail. And I'm always open for topic suggestions. So if you have an idea or a suggestion about what you'd like me to cover in an upcoming brown bag session in 2013, uh, please let me know. Um, at, at the top of my head, I've already decided that I would like to do um, a couple brown bags, one a regarding the DSpace integration, how you back up your DSpace content to DuraCloud. I'd also like to do the same on the Fedora repository end of the spectrum, how you would back up repo Fedora repository content to DuraCloud. Um, but if you have other suggestions for topics, please feel free uh, to send them along to me. My email address is listed on the screen, csmith at duraspace.org. And I would be happy to uh, address topics that come from the audience as well. So I don't see that there are any other questions coming through the chat. Thank you all very much for your participation today. I hope you all had a very wonderful